let's add in an arpeggiation so that we add even more complexity and interest to the chord progression. I happen to like the converge feature. Let's try that. Beautiful. Let's copy the chord progression to a pad and have the arpeggiation and the pad play together. Let's slow it down a bit. Sounds nice. Let's add in a bass line now. We're going to take the same chord progression and I'm going to copy it to a bass track. Here's where we need to put our thinking cap on. Remember the chord progression is one, four, six, five. So in A major, the one chord is the A, that note right there. So we can get rid of the other two notes. The four chord would be the D. So we can get rid of the other two notes. The six chord would be the F sharp. So I get rid of the other notes. And then the five chord at the end would be the E. How do I know this? Well, let's go back to the original chord progression, and we can see that we have the first scale degree, the second scale degree, the third scale degree, the fourth scale degree, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. So if we go one, four, six, five, based on this configuration that everything was in its root position, we can see what the bass notes will be. Now that I have my bass line, I'm going to copy it over because this also goes two measures long. Let's listen to everything together. Doesn't sound much like a bass line. The bass line needs to be low. Let's make it go lower in pitch. Turn off my fold, select all, shift down. Maybe one more, there we go. And now we could add in octave leaps, we could add in steps, something like this. The only thing I might want to do about this is have the second half of the phrase be slightly different from the first half. Here we go. I hope these series of instructions have been helpful to you. I plan on doing more videos on other tips and tricks that you can use in Ableton to produce more chord progressions and use some of the features in Ableton for simple music production ideas.